Jane Dennis of Heritage of Truth. September 17, 2017 marks the 230th anniversary of the signing of the U.S. Constitution. Kathy Maggard is my guest. Welcome to Heritage of Truth. Today our guest is Kathy Maggard. Welcome, Kathy. Thank you so much, Jane. Appreciate it. Uh, Kathy wrote the book, The 1947 Freedom Train. Now, for those who have no idea what the 1947 Freedom Train was, can you please tell us? Absolutely. The 1947 Freedom Train is an untold patriotic story of our country. Uh, this train traveled to all 48 states at that time carrying our founding documents and 127 documents and materials of our nation's history. Over three million people stepped aboard, viewed the documents, and were reminded of the privilege of living in a strong and free country. And so we've written this book uh, for the lower elementary age range. We're wanting to get it into the hands of families and teachers uh, to be able to teach uh, the patriotic values that the book holds. So all these people got onto the train to look at the documents. It amazes me that they were willing to take our founding documents around the country without worrying about them right. like being you know, stolen or damaged. Absolutely. We were able to meet one of the two living Marines that traveled aboard the 1947 Freedom Train, and we had a fabulous meeting with him inside of his home, and he was able to verify that, in fact, they were the original documents, uh, the Declaration of Independence, the Con Constitution, the Bill of Rights. He explained, and of course, this is on uh, the websites where you can research this more, but they had to build the firewalls in there. Uh, in the walls of the train, the documents were put in, you know, very protective um, glass uh, to be able to protect them because it is mind-boggling to think wow. that the our founding documents traveled this nation in original form. Now, did it go to all of this, the continental U.S. states? Yes. Uh, at that time, uh, Alaska and Hawaii were not a part right. of our nation, so it went to all continental 48 states, okay. and that's a little over 320 cities that the train traveled to. Wow. So 1947, that was just after World War II. Yes, and this is what um, where the inspiration came for this train. Um, there was a man named William Colblins, and he was an assistant director at the National Archives, and one day he was at the National Archives just looking at our founding documents and just feeling how sad it was that so many Americans would not have the opportunity to come and see these profound documents mm -hmm. at that time, especially in our country. And so he had this, this idea that he had to find a way to, to make that happen somehow. And four people later, it reached the president at that time, President Harry, Harry Truman, mm -hmm. and um, working together with uh, the Heritage Foundation, um, they came up with the idea of to put to these documents on a train and let the documents go to the people. Mm -hmm. And people, over three million people stepped aboard the train, as I mentioned, and they waited in lines up to six hours in mm -hmm. some places, um, in cities, in small towns where the train was not scheduled to, st to stop. Uh, people would wait just on hillsides just to get a glimpse of, of this train, train going by. Wow. And so in all, Types of weather, you know, rain, snow, mm -hmm. they waited. So it's very And was very it profound. decorated just like this picture? It was, picture? absolutely, yeah. yes. Wow. It That's was really, really a beautiful That's train. Right. And of course, there's pictures of it on the website. Mm -hmm. um, most of they're black and white <laughs> for the most part. <laughs> yeah. Well, for the people who uh, have never been to the National Archives, it's too bad it can't happen again. Yeah. Well, you know, I meet so many people. I'm educational partners with the National Infantry Museum down in Columbus, Georgia, mm -hmm. and I'm down there pretty much every Friday book signing, meeting families from all of the United States who are there for the graduation of their basic training. And so with that, I've just met so many different people, and 99.9% .9 of the people have never heard about this train. Mm -hmm. And so I had never heard of it. This is everybody's reply. So when I discovered this story, well, actually mm -hmm. my husband discovered it one day reading articles on the internet, he was mind boggled. I was an educator, a former educator, always had the back burner dream to write a children's book. So when I did the research, I just knew this was my story. Um, mm -hmm. I'm very, very passionate about mm -hmm. letting this train tour our country again. 
uh, going everywhere and beyond. Um, there's so much opportunity internationally as well um, with all the military um, posts and bases around mm -hmm. our world where they want, they're going to want this story. They're going to want to hear this story and everything that it represents in our lives. Mm -hmm. and, and let's talk about some of what it represents. The founding documents have a biblical basis because the worldview at the time, not that everyone was a Christian, but there was a biblical worldview that was in the culture. So can you talk a little bit about that in the founding documents? Absolutely. This is the thing that is so profound about our, our founding documents is that they were absolutely written with a biblical worldview. Mm -hmm. uh, the vast majority of our founding fathers were Christian and a large number of those people, the founding fathers, were ministers, in fact, and many of the, the principles were even gathered from sermons that they had preached. Mm -hmm. So the, the documents were, in fact, inspired by sermons. Wow. Yes. I think it's really important when families are talking to their children about these founding documents and possibly read this book, help them understand terms like endowed by our creator with inalienable rights or nature's God, those kinds of things. Can you explain a little bit about that? Right. Um, it's just so amazing that our founding fathers were such godly men and they were true men of faith. And for them to integrate um, those concepts, those Christian spiritual concepts into the founding of this country just really sets a, a beautiful foundation of Christian value and faith and everything that um, the Bible, where they derived their, their values and their principles and their beliefs from, that that is the basis and the foundation of the words of our Declaration of Independence and, mm -hmm. the, and the principles that guided them in the writing of the Constitution mm -hmm. and the Bill of Rights, the principles that are derived, that the, the Lord is actually, God is actually mentioned four times alone in the, in the Declaration of Independence, mm -hmm. that being one of them. And um, so it's, it's, it's very, it's, it's something that it cannot be denied. Mm -hmm. it, it is undeniable that our country was framed with a Christian biblical worldview mm -hmm. when Do you have statements like that because if you take those statements out it changes everything oh it certainly does we don't have inalienable rights if they aren't given to us by our creator absolutely yeah inalienable means they can't be taken away they cannot be taken away right so you had some quotes you brought with us you want to yes. share those yes um john adams which of course was our <clears throat> second president. Um, he was also, of course, as many know, the signer of the Declaration of Independence. He was a judge, a diplomat, diplomat uh, one of two signers of the Bill of Rights. Mm -hmm. um, he said, in quote, the general principles on which the fathers achieved independence were the general principles of Christianity. I will avow that I then believed and now believe that those general principles of Christianity are as eternal and immutable as the existence and attributes of God. Immutable, unchangeable. They're unchangeable. Yeah. They're unchangeable. Mm -hmm. And so for the framers to keep in there that we have been endowed by our creator, that we have these unalienable rights. Yeah, I know that. It was inalienable by Jefferson, wasn't it? And right. And unalienable by Adams. Right, right. <laughs> and I went with John Adams' version. <laughs> this is just profound to me. Um, mm -hmm. And then uh, Elias uh, Bodenot, he was the president of Congress. Mm -hmm. uh, he signed the peace treaty to end the American Revolution. He was the first attorney admitted, admitted to the U.S. Supreme Court bar. He was the framer of the Bill of Rights and the director of the U.S. Mint, which mm -hmm. makes sense why In God We Trust is on our currency. Mm -hmm. um, but this is profound. He says, for nearly a half a century, I have anxiously and critically studied that invaluable treasure, the Bible, mm -hmm. and I have still scarcely ever taken it up that I do not find something new, that I do not receive some valuable addition to my stock of knowledge or perceive some instructive fact that never observed before. In short, 
Were you to ask me to recommend the most valuable book in the world, I should, I should fix on the Bible as the most instructive, both to the wise and ignorant. Were you to ask me for one affording the most rational and pleasing entertainment to the inquiring mind, I should repeat, it is the Bible. And should you renew the inquiry for the best philosophy or the most interesting history, I should still urge you to look into your Bible. I would make it, in short, the alpha and omega of knowledge. Hmm. And if I remember correctly, didn't Congress print the first Bible in the U.S.? Now, I would have to research that. Yeah, I think, okay. they, I think the Congress did. Okay. And um, they That makes sense because he was the president of it. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. based on what he just said there, mm -hmm. he would probably want to be the first. And even Benjamin first Franklin, who many say was a deist but not a Christian, when they were doing the Declaration of Independence, he said that uh, we needed to invoke the help of God in right. order to make this new nation even happen. Right, and right. And so even, even those who may not have been Christian still knew that we needed God to make this freedom that we share in this country happen. Absolutely. They depended on him. Mm -hmm. um, I have another quote where um, John Adams um, made it clear that he wanted a pastor at every congressional meeting to open that meeting in prayer mm -hmm. and asking for the Lord's guidance. Mm -hmm. And that's profound. Yeah. And they still, don't they still open in prayer? Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's Thank God. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Thank God. Oh. So, uh, again, I want to show the people a few of the illustrations in here. It, it's told um, from the viewpoint of modern children who, who hear about the freedom train from a grandfather. From right? their grandfather, yeah, yes. From their grandfather. So, um, there's the the train with the military there in front of it and the people waiting in line and so it's a fun story and so where can people find out more about it okay um, my website is freedomtrainforkids.com so um, I'm a former educator so my website is loaded with all kinds of great stuff to connect with this for teachers and families we did receive um, a very honorable endorsement from a three-star re retired army general who said that he believed this book needed to be in every school in our nation. And um, that was just such a high compliment. We're very oh, honored to exciting. get that. That's it exciting. is because he understands the sacrifice mm -hmm. that, it, that it has taken um, mm -hmm. to preserve those documents. And mm -hmm. he's been on the front line. Well, front he knows lines. what it has taken to preserve our freedom, too. Exactly, exactly. The, yeah. the, the freedoms that the documents re re represent, right, absolutely. exactly. I really believe that it is the right time in our nation mm -hmm. for our education system to begin teaching these values, the values of patriotism, the values of uh, respect for all of our military heroes, um, and uh, the deep appreciation of our freedoms. And that takes you full circle back to the documents, our founding documents. And our founding fathers. And who, the founding fathers. Who most of them suffered for the stand they took. Yes. And had a lot of them lost everything. Right. So, you know, we have we have a lot to be grateful for. We absolutely do. Yeah. Well thank you so much for being thank our you, guest, Jean. Kathy. I appreciate it so much. Thank you. Share the call.